And now for the story of Tabitha, also called Dorcas, in the book of Acts, chapter 9. Listen for God's word. Now in Joppa, there was a disciple whose name was Tabitha, which in Greek is Dorcas. She was devoted to good works and acts of charity. At that time, she became ill and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in a room upstairs. Since Lida was near Joppa, the disciples who heard that Peter was there sent two men to him with the request, Please come to us without delay. So Peter got up and went with them. And when he arrived, they took him to the room upstairs. All the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing tunics and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was with them. Peter put all of them outside, and then he knelt down and prayed. He turned to the body and said, Tabitha, get up. Then she opened her eyes, and seeing Peter, she got up. He gave her his hand and helped her up. Then calling the saints and widows, he showed her to be alive. This became known throughout Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. Meanwhile, he stayed in Joppa for some time with a certain Simon, a tanner. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's message is called, Follow Your Passion. And it's a familiar saying. I think all of us have seen it or heard it, maybe on a motivational poster or on Pinterest or someone has said it to us. And I think it means versus life being dull and routine, maybe being on a treadmill, that follow your passion means to do what brings you joy and to do it now and to ignore all those voices that are saying, don't do that, you you can't do that or you don't know how to do that. It's to live in a way that you feel alive. And so to start my study this week, I actually went to see who has the domain name, Follow Your Passion. Figured that might be interesting. Well, it's for sale. So if you want to start a website called Follow Your Passion, apparently it is available, or it was on Monday. But there was one in Australia, so it's com.au, where Follow Your Passion is all about a a company led by a really cool-looking guy with a great accent. And he will take you on all sorts of adventures in Australia. And they show pictures of people surfing, the sun coming up, people going out with their surfboards, going all along the Australian coast. And there's even a guy who will teach you how to, you know, there's fire on each end of a stick, and it's a big, long stick, and you can twirl it and throw it up in the air and catch it. So maybe that would be your passion. But if you go with this company, you can learn to do that. Well, I was thinking a little more locally, so I asked in the newsletter, what's your passion to people in the church? And about seven or eight people answered me. And it was interesting how there was common passions, meaning uh, they had them in common. Singing was held in common by several people. Singing was your passion. And I can imagine that's true here at this church where singing is a wonderful gift to the congregation and to God. Also, there was a common one that was baking or cooking. And you know who you are that put up that baking, cooking. I love to to prepare a cake for people on their birthday, somebody said, who's here today. And then there was hiking, walking in the woods, hiking. And then there was travel. You know who you are. And all of those I can appreciate as passions. I don't sing very well. But I have my own passions too, and I loved reading about yours. As we dwell in the scripture, though, we're going to look at follow your passion in a little bit of a different way. A little bit more biblical, not that those things are not, but a little more perhaps faithfully to what follow your passion might mean to a Christian who is dwelling in the word and wanting to show the word in his or her life. And so in this Bible passage today, we have two people who are following their passion for sure. We have a lady named Tabitha, that's the, her Aramaic name, and Dorcas, who is her Greek name. And back in that world, you would 
possibly have two names because you lived in a world with two cultures. The culture wherever your world was, Israel, and then the culture of the Greek-Roman world. So her name is Dorcas, and there was a lady in Jacksonville, you remember Dorcas, who had a charity for children for many years? That's probably where that comes from. Well, she had a passion for sewing clothes and giving them to people who didn't have them. And I don't know if they were pretty tunics or plain tunics, but I imagine them actually as very pretty tunics and that people had them and they were showing them in the story that they had been given these tunics, uh, widows, by Dorcas, Tabitha. And then Peter, who could be thought of as more full of passion, maybe, than Peter, following his passion. Peter, one of the disciples who left his job, went with Jesus, and now he finds himself an evangelist. Uh, someone call him a circuit rider because he went from city to city. He goes from one to the other to the other, sharing the word. These are two who follow their passion, but then something happens. And in every good story or movie... If you think of the plot almost of any good movie, you'll notice something happens. Something happens that changes things. Maybe it's an obstacle, or maybe it's an incident, a situation, an accident, and that's what happens here. Two people going along perfectly happy, following their passion, and then, as we well know, someone can become sick and die. Even when they're a really good person, who could be a better person than Tabitha or Dorcas? How untimely for her to die when she's making these things for people who need them. But it happens, and it changes everything. And so in movies or in books, when the thing happens, the theme deepens, and you start seeing really what the theme is all about. So we go deeper with follow your passion here. So there are four things that I learned from looking at this theme in this story. And the first one is, when it comes to following your passion, don't wait. Don't wait. So Dorcas, Tabitha, was doing exactly what God was calling her to do. She was doing what I'm just imagining, reading between the lines, made her feel joyful and glad. Just like singing or baking or traveling or Hiking made you feel when you reported that in my little survey. She was doing what she wanted to do. And you know, when you, it's a difference when you go to a funeral of someone who's been doing what they love to do and a funeral of someone that maybe has been putting it off. There's a big difference. And so we have joy that Dorcas, Tabitha, was doing exactly what God was calling her to do, was following her passion when that happened. I read about, um, again, about Albert Nobel this week. Nobel, like Nobel Prize. You may remember he was a Swedish chemist. And in his 50s, something happened. His brother died in 1888. His brother's name was Ludwig. But the press mixed it up. They thought he had died. Now, Nobel made uh, all kinds of things involving dynamite and munitions. He actually is the inventor of dynamite. So what the person in the press put as the headline for his obituary was, Tradesman of Death is Dead, because his products were used in war. They were used to blow people up. Tradesman of death is dead. And he saw that, and he was shocked as how people saw him, as how his life was being measured and had been measured. And so just a few years later, he actually went to the, um, in Paris to the Swedish-Norwegian club where he went when he was there, and he penned a four-page will. And the four-page will, after giving some things to family and staff because he had no children put everything into this Nobel Prize Foundation. And so starting in 1901, by the way, he died the next year after he wrote the will, which was only a few years after his brother died. In 1901, the first prizes were given. There are five different prizes given for various achievements, including peace. 
So don't put it off. I think that's the idea behind um, the scripture. She was doing what she loved and thinking about how do you want to be remembered? How do you want to be remembered? And how do you want your family to remember you? Follow your passion. The second thing that I learned from this passage is that passion is not necessarily pleasure. Yes, there might be joy. There should be joy. It should make you feel alive. But passion is not necessarily pleasure. I have a friend who was felt called to a new career, a second career. It was a career in nursing. And so she had toddlers, and her husband had just left her. So she couldn't figure out how could she follow that passion. It was going to bring her joy, she knew. She knew it was what God was calling her to do, but she didn't know what to do. So she enrolled, and she did all her homework at night. She found ways for people to take care of her children during the day. It took several years. Following your passion is not always pleasure. There might be things leading up to it that are hard. There might be things in your passion that are hard. So I look at Peter. Think about Peter. When he was preaching, perhaps, he just finished a sermon maybe, and someone came and got him and said, a lady's died 10 miles down the road. That's how far it was. And we need you to come with us to a house that death has just visited. Everyone's crying. So upset. Peter, can you come? Following your passion is not always pure pleasure. But Peter knew he had a calling because his passion actually was Jesus. And so he followed Jesus to that house. What do you think he was thinking on the way? Yay! I'm going to a house where death has just visited. Can't wait to get there. Can't wait to see what they're going to serve me to eat. Can you imagine how heavy his heart was and how much he was praying? Maybe he was tired from all the work he was doing. Maybe he had a bunch of times he was going to preach in churches lined up, and he had to say, I'm not coming. But he went. So I started thinking how Jesus... Last week is called the Passion Week. Who had more of a passion that he was following than Jesus? Passion for people, passion for life, passion for God. And yet his last week is called the Passion Week, and that is because the word passion comes from a word that actually means suffering originally. Sometimes you suffer for your passion. Like my friend who got her nursing degree, went through all kinds of hard things. Like Peter who went to the house where death had just visited. And like Jesus went to his death so we could all have life. So I think about following your passion when you are a believer. It gets a little bit more complicated. And the last thing I wanted to say about that is that passion is what fills you up. That's number three. And number four is passion is what you pour out. I love when I look behind one word uh, each time in the original Greek, and I found where it said that Tabitha was devoted to works, good works and charity. It said she was devoted. In other other, um, translations, it says she was full of good works. She was full of good works and charity. And I take that to mean she was full. That filled her up. She was so full of that 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 was her passion. And that full of is the same word it uses when it says we are full of the Spirit, that believers are full of the Holy Spirit. Peter was full. Peter was full of the Spirit, and that's why he went and did what he did. That's why he could raise up someone who was dead. What regular person can do that? And it only happened a few times in the Bible where a regular person Besides Jesus, raise someone up. And Peter was full of the Spirit. But also it's pouring out. Passion is pouring out. And so Peter poured out that passion to raise her up. And I wonder what happened when Dorcas, Tabitha, was raised up. Think for a minute. What happened? 
Did she go back to sewing clothes? Did she become an, uh, an evangelist herself? Motivational speaker? It doesn't really matter. As long as what she did was pouring out what the Spirit had filled her up with in Jesus Christ. When we go into the scripture and we dwell here, we see how very real a believer's life is when it's filled with passion, how very exciting, sometimes not pleasurable, but filling up and pouring out. Follow your passion is very well restated, I think, by Parker Palmer. He's a Quaker writer, written a lot of good books about vocation, about believing, about the life of a believer, Parker Palmer. And he also channels some other theologians when he says this. He says, let your life speak. I'm going to use that instead of follow your passion. Let your life speak. And channeling another theologian, he says... Our vocation, our calling is where our deepest joy, our deepest gladness meets the world's deepest need. Maybe you're in a situation now in one of your many callings, perhaps as a parent, as a spouse, as a friend, as a, in your work, in the church. Maybe you're in a situation now where those calls line up. Your deepest joy Gladness, the world's deepest need. And if not, I'd say that's following your passion, according to Jesus, according to God. May it be so. Amen.